This is a big one for you. This is going out to you directly. Uh, this Saturday is actually the Royal Rumble, one of the biggest wrestling events of the year. British so Bulldog it's... Davey Boy Smith going to be partaking? Well, it's tough when you're dead, but uh, <laughs> the ghost of, possibly. And we're live. Let's go. This is the Dos Padres podcast. I'm Major J. That's the Sundance Kid. We're here covering Boston sports and so much more. Sundance, we are back with another packed show. Uh, I don't know how you're feeling, but I'm feeling pretty good about this one. Uh, we've got a lot to talk about. Uh, we're going to be starting off. We're going to be celebrating uh, Red Sox hero and icon, Big Poppy. David Ortiz voted into the Hall of Fame this week. Big, big deal there. So we're going to talk about that. We're also going to talk about... Some notable names that are left out. Um, we're going to touch on that in a bit. We're going to be previewing uh, this weekend's AFC and NFC championship games. A lot going on there. And we're also going to be debuting a new segment, The Bargain Bin. Um, so stick around for that. Should be a good time. Before we get going here, Sundance, what you sipping on? I am sipping on none other than Tazo Zen Tea. With a drip of local honey. Uh, the sniffles are getting to me. Uh, I think it's a little bit of poor eating habits combined with a, a really, you know, powerhouse work ethic. I'm probably working too hard. Um, <laughs> <laughs> no self back pat there. Just completely objective on that. But you could be right. It's a good thing the wife isn't listening right now because 13 things probably would have been thrown at me from all I, different I directions. So I'm fighting a little, a little cold, but I'm hanging in there tonight for the podcast this evening. What are you sipping on, Major J? I'm not going to lie. If I knew you were not going to be partaking in libations, I would have not started one myself. Uh, I am sipping on, you're going to like this, from a Wormtown Brewery, 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 the uh, Table Talk Blueberry and Lemon Pie Ale. Ew. Brewed with table talk, blueberry, and lemon pies. Um, it looks that looks really awesome. Good. Does it taste? Does it at least smell or taste like those crappy pies we used to eat back when we were 10? I'm gonna say it, it leans heavily to the lemon. Okay, yeah. Figured. It's an acquired taste. I'm gonna gotcha. say the All right. um, but no. That's uh, it's a good time. Thank you to Wormtown Brewery and to Tazo Tea. Hopefully, soon to be sponsors of the podcast eventually. All right, let's uh, let's let's jump into it. Let's start off with a little rundown. Sundance. We've got a uh, you know the week that was. Uh, it's been interesting action over the last week. Um, as far as MLB, Sox still got a lockout. A little bit of movement there. Not nothing major, but. Uh, MLB PA did drop their request for an age-based free agency system uh, versus the current service time model we've got and have known for years, uh, revised its proposal to uh, changes to the revenue sharing system, which I thought was funny to begin with, but whatever. Um, in general, regarded as a nice step towards kind of meeting in the middle. So maybe this means things will start moving in the right direction to come to an agreement before spring training. We don't lose any time. I'm not holding my breath. We'll see. But it's something I feel like it's more positive than we've seen with other uh, work stoppages in terms of this time of the, of the year. So who knows? Um, there was a rumor you pointed out to me the other night. I found it interesting. Not sure if I'm pronouncing this correctly. Seiya Suzuki, uh, big, big slugger, uh, 5 2 yeah. player from Japan who yep. is going to be hot in the free agent market, rumored to have a deal in place with the Sox already for when the lockout ends. Um, not crazy about it per se we've talked about this offline off air but uh i'm not a fan of dumping potentially a lot of money to someone unproven um uh, nothing against japanese players it's just this very 50 50 proposition and i am not a fan of paying for an unproven commodity here when there are plenty of proven commodities already here for what seems to me like another attempt to save a few bucks to try to get the upside it feels like another kind of bloom um Tampa Bay type of move. I'll let you, if you got an update opinion on that real quick, let me know. 
Uh, yeah, sure. It, you bring up a good point, right? This is going to be uh, a rather signature signing for Bloom. Um, and the Japanese market is very hit or miss. Uh, you, you couldn't be any more uh, right on with that. You saw the Red Sox really get the best and worst of it with Daisuke Matsuzaka. I, I mean, he, listen, I, I know that he wasn't Cy Young, but he did win, I, I believe, 18 games one year. Um, and we did win the World yes. Series with him, if I'm not mistaken. Um, 07? I think it was 07. Yeah. 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 Um, so so listen, um, and then we saw him be absolutely terrible. Uh, mm. Yes. Listen, it, you know, it, it, it could go either way. It, you, you have to be encouraged by two things. Um, you have to choose to be encouraged by at least two things here. Uh, number one, Kyle okay. Bloom is at the helm. He's a smart guy. He's a sharp guy. Look at what we did last year with that roster. Um, right. So I, I do have some faith in Kyle Bloom here. Uh, number in terms of evaluating talent, you don't do with Tampa and what he did with the Red Sox last year, and, and not know a thing or two about other teams undervaluing um, and, and sure. really striking, you know, while the iron's hot uh, right. on certain commodities. Uh, number two, uh, geez, there's that guy out in California for the angels. Who's been a pretty darn good player. Um, you know, he happens to be a pitcher and a power hitter, right. uh, but sure. hey. yeah. you know, Right. I don't think he's going to be Shohei, but I don't think he would be getting this much attention if he wasn't pretty good. And I think we're seeing right. now where the Hunter Renfro deal really is going to come into play. Listen, yeah. if, if, listen, I, this could really be a signature moment. Uh, I'll wrap up. This could be a signature signing for Bloom, coupled with a lot of variations that go down this off season and into this season, he's got good young players coming up. Tristan Cassis looks like a pretty good player um, yeah. coupling him with Dalbeck. Uh, these prospects that he got out of Milwaukee um, for Hunter Renfro. And then geez, if this guy comes in from Japan and hits 30 home runs, it's going to be pretty sure. cool. So I'm mm -hmm. actually looking forward to it. Uh, I hope it goes okay. down. Quick point on that. Yeah, obviously the the talents there, the tools are there. It's just whether it transfers, like you're saying. Um, and for me, it really comes down to not so much the signing itself, but what does this mean? Like you were just alluding to, what else is this by signing him and putting this money into into Suzuki? What does this mean in terms of where's money not going potentially, right. i.e., the pitching staff, etc. Right. So exactly. it's almost like a TBD. We'll see. But yeah. agree. Uh, all right. So coming off the Sox. Bruins, uh, not much movement there in terms of the standings. Still fourth in the Atlantic, eighth in the Eastern Conference. I don't see that changing much given the distance between both ninth place Detroit and the teams in front of them. Uh, they have been playing well, a couple of nice wins over the week uh, versus Washington and Winnipeg, but then a terrible loss at home, you could say, to Anaheim uh, Monday, I believe. And then they blew a 3-1 three, three lead going to the third period last night, Wednesday night, in Colorado. That could have been a huge win for the team. Uh, and said they blew it, gave up a game tying goal with the extra man on the ice in the last minute, and then lost in overtime. Uh, but overall, team's still looking like they're, they're things are more on the up than, than, than the down. Uh, Marshawn did get injured um, last week against Washington, was boarded uh, with a right in, right shoulder injury, um, but did come back. Came back. Uh, with that game, which is looking okay, he scored last night. Rask has been very up and down. I think that people are starting to freak out a little bit about him. I think it's a little early. The guy didn't have a traditional camp or anything else coming off the injury. I think the, the idea is let him give some time to ramp up towards playoff time, et cetera. We'll see what we got. All Mark has actually been playing pretty well rotating with him. So we'll, we'll see. Uh, Bruins up, upcoming games over the next week. We got at Arizona. We're still on a West Coast trip on Friday. Uh, at Dallas Saturday, so back to back. That's gonna be a tough one. But then also home against Seattle Tuesday, so we can get a couple a couple wins there. Right to ship will be good. Um, next up, we got the Celtics. Not much movement there either. Still ninth in the East, just toiling at the end in that that seven to ten area. Um, they feel like they've looked better in general, but they're not really making any headway. Um, they did so they won five to seven, and we'll get to that in a sec. Uh, they did beat they they house Sacramento. 
on Tuesday, 120 to 75, largest home win in franchise history. Um, and then they had their biggest win of the season at Washington Sunday, 116 to 87. So that's some positives uh, for this team. Uh, Sunday, it's your big thing was them going on a roll in January. They're eight and five this month. Um, we've got three games left for the month coming up. We're at Atlanta Friday night, at New Orleans Saturday, uh, four games rather, home to Miami Monday versus Charlotte, the, that upset Charlotte team on Wednesday. So that this little stretch is going to make or break whether your your overall prediction for January comes to fruition overall. But but they're there. They're there. Um, notably, Jason Tatum stepping up, I think, big time. Dropped 50, 10, 7 uh, against Washington. His fifth fifth 50-point – I didn't realize this. Fifth 50-point game already. Already past Bird for the most 50-point games in Celtics history. I found that insane. Insane. I But – you know, it speaks to the talent. Yeah, listen, the Celtics, um, kind of what we thought. You, you know, I, I think that they, listen, had a really strong sense they were going to win more than they lost this month. That is nearly played out to fruition. Mm-hmm. I, I think that they'll probably, you know, uh, split these last three or four games. Maybe they'll they'll go three and one. Who knows? That They're not easy games by any stretch. Um, but I won't be surprised if, if they close out the month with a, a pretty good winning record um still not really enough to make brad stevens uh trade you know the entire uh right. core break right. things up blow it up yeah. um and certainly not enough for for them to to make stevens go out and acquire you know some blockbuster uh great player um i'll tell you if, if for me as a true celtics fan as long as we come out of this trade deadline and not have traded Brown, Tatum, or Smart, I'm pretty good. I'll be honest with you. Yeah, those no, three I... are the core. And, and I don't see them trading Robert Williams. They drafted him. I think they're taking, they're bringing him along slowly. So he he's not going anywhere. But I just don't want to see uh, – I don't think Tatum or Brown's going anywhere. And I really don't want to see Smart go anywhere. You just never know. This is the time of year when – all those smart rumors, you know, start to oh. bubble up. So <laughs> big time, big time. No, I agree. Um, and you gotta assume that stuff's gonna really gonna start catching fire the next, I mean, week or two, We're already almost into February. It's some something's gonna be bubbling up soon, you gotta assume. But uh, all right, coming out of that, Patriots news, obviously not much going on coming uh out of their their bounce from the playoffs. One note. Josh McDaniels, this is as of even today, is recording this on Thursday. Josh McDaniels is supposedly interviewing for the Las Vegas job. Um, even as of a little while ago, though, I'm seeing rumors that even say as he was trying to put together a potential staff, he's already fallen out of favor, is not not the favorite anymore. He went from being the favorite immediately to already not being the favorite anymore. So I don't know what's going on there. So I, much I, conflicting information with this yeah. one. So much conflicting I'm information. I'm fine with it. I don't want him going anywhere. So I'm fine with Agreed. it. I hope it's BS. Yep. I, whatever. Agreed. I hope it's all just a smoke screen. Whatever. Uh, one other note, not not a local related, but as you see, I'm repping here. And anyone who's who's not watching, I'm uh, rocking a United States of America. It's actually the U.S. men's national team t-shirt repping the uh, men's soccer team. World Cup qualifying starting tonight, Thursday night in Columbus against El Salvador. Game is actually already wrapped up. one nothing win, three points. This is a critical uh, part of the cycle these, this, over this next week to try to get uh, to qualify for Cater in, uh, in November for the World Cup. we got Sunday at Canada, Wednesday in St. Paul versus Honduras. Minimum six points are needed, ideally nine. We've already got three in. LFG, let's go, I believe. Um, if anyone knows me, you know that I, I wrap the USMNT uh, pretty hard. All my social media profile picks are their logo. So definitely behind them. Just had to, had to throw a shout out and mention that as well. So if you can check them out over the weekend at Canada, definitely do it. All right. That said, we can roll out of that. Let's, let's talk some Hall of Fame. Uh, Hall of Fame vote happened this week, uh, a couple of days ago. One person was voted in. Uh, and that was, you might've heard you, of him. You might've heard of him. Uh, especially if you're listening to this or watching us now, big poppy. David Ortiz was voted in with about 77% of the vote. Uh, rightfully so first ballot hall of famer. I don't think 
I'm not going to start spewing. We're not going to start spewing stats. We we all know the stats. Like it is his his uh, regular season statistics backing up his playoff statistics more than backing up. Ortiz in the deep right field. Back is Sheffield. We'll see you later tonight. Ortiz fights it off center field. Damon run into the plate, and he can keep on running to New York. Game six tomorrow night. They've got Ortiz, who's never homered against Benoit in his career. Bases loaded. Two out. In the end, statistics aside, the man helped end an 86-year World Series drought in Boston with not just one World Series win, but three. Uh, everything is there. The only argument that was potentially out there was he was on the Mitchell Report 2003, the survey testing, blah, blah, blah. It's been beaten to death already. I, I'm, I'm pretty much over it because I don't think any player on that list of 100 was like 103 people. We're on that list. If you go back in the day to that thing, I don't think anyone on that list was more scrutinized um, other than and people Ortiz. who have already been proven to have been caught um, than right. Ortiz was. Um, the guy never failed a test after that. There are plenty of guys on there who never even thought twice of again after that initial report came out. Come on. Like the guy was tested more than any other player on the team. People have attested to that. He never failed anything. Stuff was going on that back then. It wasn't, we weren't, we wasn't illegal. We do we, was it a good thing if people were doing no, but was it a week? Like, was it against the rules? Was there anything in place? No, you know, once you put something in place after that point, then it's a different story, I guess. But right. I, it's, a, it's a BS argument. He's in as he should be. Um, I don't know if you want to talk about teas or if you want to get right into the snubs or what you want to talk about. Um, I, I, I think you have to, uh, well, well, they go hand in hand, uh, to a degree, right? Um, saw some friends on Facebook that were posting. You know, geez, you know, so very much echo the way I feel. Happy for Ortiz to get in, right? But geez, I really think you know Bonds should be in too. And and you know, why isn't uh, why isn't Clemens getting in? Um, I I agree with you. I think on this, um, I do believe Clemens uh, should be in the Hall of Fame. I think he took steroids. I still think he should be in the Hall of Fame. Um, yeah. Uh, he was a Hall of Famer before steroids, and the same applies to Barry Bonds, if you're asking me. Um, I know there are others well, out yeah, there that so feel – that works out. Yeah. Well, I, I know there are others out there that feel really strongly that, it, you know, um, reputation plays a huge part in this. Um, I, you know, there's a lot of guys in the Hall of Fame that probably weren't – wonderful individuals uh to be very honest with you sure um i'm not sure listen ted williams decorated war veteran face of red sox years yonder uh maybe just the face now if you can find but it. but listen let's be honest i i mean he was not very friendly to the press at all no, no. um no. and and there's some some stories about him in which he may not have been the, the, the most fantastic uh, father figure as well. Um, so, right. you know, I just don't believe that the Hall of Fame is for personality. I don't think it's it's a popularity contest. I absolutely think Clemens should be in, Bonds should be in, Ortiz belongs in. That all being said, I'm sorry, I don't think David Ortiz took steroids. I, I really don't. David right. Ortiz didn't – here's my argument for that. David Ortiz – hit 30 and 100 in 2003 breakout year breakout year sure um that's with him playing part-time to start the season splitting with jeremy john yep yep Yep. sure sure um here's the thing uh he was tested overly frequently yes uh as will middlebrooks uh mentioned uh reese uh just just today in, in a boston herald article um will middlebrooks said uh, he's never seen a player tested more often in the major leagues than David Ortiz. He was often tested three times a week, 
whereas some guys were tested three times a year. Right. Um, David totally Ortiz, random, that system, by the way. Completely it, it, random. Completely random, right? Absolutely. But listen, you were under a magnifying glass, and MLB was looking to catch guys. Oh, yeah. And if they At wanted time, to catch Ortiz, they would have caught him. Um, yes. I, you know, Why don't you ask David Ortiz if he was on steroids in 2000? Nine, nine. <laughs> well, exactly. I, I mean, the guy hit like 150 with four home runs for about three months. Um, we actually I mean, thought biggest, it might be over at that point. It, he, he, the guy nearly retired in 09. Um, right. So there you go. I, I'm sorry, but he's not a steroid guy. Um, he he just isn't, and he never was. He never will be, and he absolutely belongs in the Hall of Fame. Yeah, I think I pretty much obviously agree with you on all points with Ortiz. The uh, the Bonds, Clemens, uh, and to an extent Schilling situation as well, though Schilling's a kind of a different animal, um, but Bonds and Clemens specifically. I was very slow to come around for a long time. I, I've always never been definitively strongly one way or the other on this, but early on I was okay with them not getting in. I've come around on it a bit the mm. last couple of years in that if this was their last chance to get in, barring they, they are potentially going to qualify for the, the veterans committee to, to be to have them vote in uh, beginning next year. But that's at the discretion of the hall, whether they're even going to be on that ballot. So that's a whole nother whole big, you know, that's going to come up next year. We'll worry about that then, but this being their 10th and final year on the writer's ballot. Right. When it when it push came to shove, I if you had to ask me gun in my head, I'd say they should be they should be in. Um, if you want to asterisk them, or footnote them, or something, or even just have a wing in the Hall of Fame or do something to note all this stuff, fine. If you want to do that, I, I don't really care. But in the end, they didn't not do what they did. Like regardless of what may have been behind it, if there were PDs, steroids, etc. It doesn't change the fact that Bonds is still – he still hit all those home runs. It did not happen. There you go. Whether you think someone was behind or not, it did happen. It's a fact. It did in real life happen. He is – whether you want to argue that what is enhanced or not, he is – he was he physically hit 700 or 800 and what, – what did he finish with? Uh, eight, whatever. Um, 773? 772. You know, we're actually going to find it right now. I've got it right here. I just saw this, and I don't know why I can't remember. But um, I think Bonds, I, I, 762. Because se- right, he, he in, right. So he, he broke the 755 with Hank. Um, he did not hit those home runs. Whether you want to argue, you know, in the end, he ultimately is the major league all time home run hitter. Like right. it's not debatable. He did hit them. Um, so we're not talking about the stats. He should be in. It happened. Same with Clemens, more Cy Youngs than anyone else. I know stuff was behind it. I think more than anyone, Bonds and Clemens are poster boys for you clearly got caught and then you want to throw A Rod in later. But they should be A A Rod and Manny are very different. That's an even different argument. Yes. And and, and listen, full disclosure, I think those two should be in the Hall of Fame. I, I just, I have a mindset that is. Were they a Hall of Famer before they started obviously juicing? And then for those two, before they got caught? And, and my answer is absolutely. Oh, sure. I mean, you, people forget Manny Ramirez started playing baseball in the majors in 95. I think A-Rod as well. Believe it or not. Oh, oh Manny played on those Indians teams. Manny, Manny was, was, Manny, was go, Manny went back to 93, maybe? So it might have been earlier. It I'm just thinking. I'm thinking about honestly thinking about baseball cards. Um, with his rookie Jeez. cards. I, I mean, look, he came up it. right, super young. Um, oh, but you know what? You you it's so it's it's a good transition right here in, in the conversation because I wanted to bring this up as well. Um, a Rod specifically. Um, first year in the ballot as well. Obviously, he has multiple positive tests and suspension, etc. He, he does. So he ended up getting uh thirty four point three percent. On, of the vote, and I from what of what I would hear of the talk uh, was that whether or not they think maybe that will steadily increase over the years. The so kind of the way, even oh, though they so. didn't get there, Bonds and Clemens and Summer did. Um, a lot of people were like, "No, they think it, that's probably going to be it," because he's be, given the nature of him. It's just going to he's just going to toil there for ten years and be done. I, I'm curious I, if you think, a, if you, if you already answered one question. You think he should be in, 
beyond that, do you think he eventually will get in? Because there's that argument too. A lot of people have been talking about as older writers cycle off with their votes and newer, younger writers get in that they think also if, if Bonds and Clemens had been on the ballot for five more years, like it used to be for 15 years that they might've gotten in over like by 14, 15, because of the younger writers maybe getting in and giving those votes. Whereas the older, older writers are not as keen. That's very black and white uh, curmudgeon about, you know, upholding the the game, et cetera. Maybe a rod now who's got nine more years to get in. Do you think he eventually gets in or do you think he's going to be stuck in neutral forever? I think he gets in. It's going to be a long time. It's going to be eight or nine years down the road. Uh, I absolutely be- believe that he belongs in. Um, it's 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 going to be a little while. It's like you said, these some of these writers are going to have to cycle off. Now, with these writers, we can transition out of this conversation, but do it on this note. I'm curious your thoughts on Schilling not getting in. I feel strongly that Schilling is a Hall of Fame pitcher. And, and I'm going to go with just based on his postseason. I mean, listen, he was a, he was a, he was a nice pitcher, regular season-wise. Uh, again, people don't realize he was pitching in the majors in 92. Uh, he was on that 93 Philly staff in the World Series. Yeah. Um, listen, this is a guy that was one of the best postseason pitchers of Long all time. time. And Long so time. for me... He's a Hall of Famer. What's wrong here is the fact that his his percentage has gone down over the years. Right. He's not a steroid guy. It's because of his politics, and he is he is an interesting character. I'm the first to say it. Yeah, but yeah. that's the writers basically saying, you know, I just, I, really, like I just don't like you, and I'm not voting you in. You're like, really? And that's the problem with the process. That's unfortunately, a um, that's I, a I agree. I obviously can't stand him as a person. Which is unfortunate because he is a 2004 uh, Red Sox World Series hero, uh, you know, bloody sock and all. Uh, but I agree. Um, Listen, the reason throw- for him to not for the reason for him not to be voted in is even more ridiculous than Bonds and Clemens because it's simply just pettiness. Listen, here here's what would be really cool. Here's what would be really. I promise we can transition out of this after this. Here's what would be really cool, and we could we could start it. It it starts now on this podcast, January twenty seventh, two thousand twenty two. How cool would it be to have a national pro sports fan balloting day where you go to the polls, just like election day for politics in November? Make it, make it, you know. Six months, eight months out, make it like you know. There's nothing great. There's nothing overly special about June except for my wedding anniversary, which is phenomenal. But there's mm-hmm. there's no like huge events in June, right? What if in June flag day? But sure. What if in June every sports fan, eighteen and up, we'll put we'll put an age barometer on it. Eighteen and up can mm-hmm. cast a ballot for an NFL Hall of Famer an MLB Hall of Famer, NHL, and NBA. I mean, I do see some flaws with that. I'm not going to lie. But, dude, how how incredible would that be? That would be a national I, – I mean. It, it would be – you know what? I just, in general, the idea of getting fan involvement in these votes, uh, to some extent, to go, to go back to – potentially canceling out or offsetting a little bit baseball writers potential issues like we just saw. Uh, I think there needs to be some kind of offset there and that that's an idea to, to kind of counteract that a little bit. I mean, I would do it. No online voting. You've got to get out to the polls. Um, Maybe there's mail-in votes. I don't really know. Uh, I'm probably overthinking this and and you can say. Yeah. We were potentially getting into voting rights issues and what kind of (laughs) identification do I have to bring? And are you going to lose my ballot on a hanging Chad? And, (laughs) you know, that's already a big enough issue now as it is, but. Uh, great idea, though. We will we will <laughs> see if we can carry that forward. Um, maybe put it on on social and see if, if the other people want to jump on the bandwagon. But all right, that's uh, I think that's good for the Hall of Fame vote. Uh, before we get into the next segment, obviously we need to take a second to 
just to plug the show again, if you're watching us on YouTube, make sure you smash the like button, hit subscribe, turn notifications on. If you're listening on your favorite podcast provider, make sure you rate and review. It helps us tremendously. All part of the world takeover. All right, we're since so we're gonna we're gonna roll into a new segment. We're gonna have a little fun here, kind of switch gears. We're gonna start our bargain bin segment. Love it. Yep. Having nothing to do with sports whatsoever. We're just gonna we're just gonna take a break, have a little fun with this. Uh, I think everyone else, if this works out, this could become a staple. I think people are gonna enjoy this. So, this is essentially where you and I scour, scour, near and For far, hours. high and low. Uh, Facebook Marketplace, which if anyone has ever been on there, you know that's quite an adventure in itself, <laughs> uh, both buying and selling. And we we went through to trying to find the uh, our biggest deals of the week. And we're going to present them, and then we're going to give them a rating uh, from 1 to 10 as far as what a, how good of a bargain it really is. Uh, 1 being terrible, 10 being take all my money. So I'm going to go ahead. I'm going to present my first one uh, to let me know. I'll give you just you know we'll read the description and then um, just give your take. What's your first thought is on it? So let's go, go ahead. All right, first one. Uh, kept it simple to start. Diapers. They're free. Zero dollars. Uh, as the seller says, free. I tried them for my son and hate them. Always a good selling point. But if you do like these, they are open. And I quote, but obviously not tampered with. Well, Genie. I don't know how obvious that is, other than they have not been chatted in the box. But uh, I found that interesting that somebody's out there just giving away free diapers. Um, and some people are just going to take them. They are only a size five. Before you give a rating on that, they're free, but only a size five. So you need to have a very specific baby to take these on. Uh, okay. So I am way past my baby raising days uh my youngest turns 15 uh in a week so open in my mind equals tampered um it's really got to be in the electronic arena for me to give open box uh, a fair shake so for me this is going to land somewhere around uh probably a one a one it's free yeah it's 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 free but you know one man's garbage is another man's Treasure? stinky garbage, I, stinky, I guess. Okay. Um, so uh, this is not a bargain, and, and we can move on pretty quickly. No thank so, you. And so everyone knows, like, the, the criteria in these, these uh, ratings, it's equal parts uh, price, when we feel like it's an actual value. Um, it's also, is it the appearance? And it's also just functionality. Is it something that we can get some use out of? Hence... It'd be tough for you to get a uh, much use out of a size five diaper with no babies. Nope. Understandable. All right. So let's go to that. We're going to go ahead and bring up. There it is. All right. Okay. So this is uh, the, the Trapper's Bible. Now, this is interesting. Tell me. So, so a couple things here. If you look at the illustrations on the Trapper's Bible, they do appear as if they date back to perhaps the early 1800s. So there is that. Um, when trapping was actually... <laughs> um, I mean, I'm no hunter. I could be wrong. I, but Now, here's the... Th this is kind of interesting, right? If you go up to the top left picture, it looks like a bald eagle has been trapped in its nest. Um, I don't understand why that's legal um because you, you can't do that to it a probably eagle. was then um perhaps it was then uh however if you look right next to that picture there's also what appears to be someone tossed out an old sink and this uh fine author uh eustace hazard livingston has turned said junk piece into i believe some type of rat trap um it's very so listen, it's the most complete guide to trapping and hunting tips ever. Um, That's you, what it's not going to beat that. Yes. Uh, I would like to. It's for nine dollars. Dropped from nineteen oh, down to nine. Right. Where, where do you put this? Where do you rate this? So it's unique. <laughs> Although there are about seven or eight others available on the marketplace as well, so maybe it's not that unique. But. Um, 
nine bucks still feels a little pricey for something that I feel like I, I can only very like use in a very specific instance. You know, say have you, have if I get lost in the, well, in the wild. Thank you very much. Have you seen The Edge? So it is a film titled The Edge, starring Alec Baldwin. Uh, <laughs> As well, as well as Anthony Hopkins. Now, what you need to know is this. <laughs> what you need... Hold on. No, what you I, need I'm... to know is this. Phenomenal movie. If you haven't watched a good... A, a good grizzly bear flick in a long time, <laughs> Bart the Bear gives an incredible performance. I, mean, I, knew, that that. I knew that <laughs> was happening. I knew that was happening. Uh, an Academy right Award that. winning film. Uh, I highly recommend it. You're telling it. me this is, that I can trap Frank the Bear with this, with this guy. <laughs> sure. All the, um, all the bear meat I can, I can eat for a year. You, <laughs> it's you, a nine. All right, you sold me. I'll give it a six. It is ready to ship as well. So, All right, uh, we'll take that. Let's, uh, let's see what we got next on the list here. Another one of yours. This is a good one. So, the Squirrel Whisperer mug. Uh, we could all use a, a new mug. Um, mugs get tiresome. Um, they impact your mood, uh, whether it's in the morning, on a podcast, uh, what have you. Uh, estimated arrival is right around the corner, February 2nd, February 8th. Uh, I, I found okay. the, the artistry with this mug to be on the higher end. And... Um, yeah, so I, I could just let that sit out there and, and see yeah. where, where this falls on your bargain bin meter. Um, well, I mean, reading the description uh, from the seller, high quality mugs make the perfect gift for anyone. I, I can argue that. Designs printed on both sides, two sided prints on every mug we sell. Okay, so you know what? You're, you're getting me there. I like that, where I, whether I'm holding my right hand or my left hand, you're going to see what's going on with the, with the squirrel and the nut. Um, $8. Here's the thing. This is what's getting me a little bit. Ships for five seventy-five. Mm. You're now t- talking now fourteen dollar investment on a scroll mark. So I, it is in stock. I'm I'm gonna go. You're right. You can hit up your local Dollar General and, and just I'm, cut I'm out. Be the honest. I have a lot of together. mugs. I have a lot of mugs. So I'm gonna go three. I'm gonna go three. Gotcha. But um, what is a squirrel whisperer, by the way? Get them all to come hang out around the house. <laughs> okay. It's like the Caesar. It's like Caesar with dogs, but just with squirrels. Gotcha. All right. So uh, it is. Uh, it's very simple, but yet different. Uh, it is praying hands, and I, I don't really know for three dollars. And for anyone who's not watching this, it essentially, really is two hands, ceramic or something. Yeah. Just together, like they're praying, cut off at the wrist and on a plaque like round uh, base. Um, I don't know whose hands they are. I can speculate. Plenty of people here. Um, Three dollars ships for nine twenty-five. So that's that. That's that might be a problem in itself. Condition used like new. Here's the thing for me personally. If you put this on the mantle, it's a talking piece when you have people over. Yeah. People are like, sure. why do you have a pair of hands on your fireplace? Well, George, let me tell you. Um, you know, I, I, this is going to be a cannot rate, and I'll tell you why. Unless That's you answer weird. this question, and I don't think it's in the description. Are those manufactured or hand sculpted? Makes oh, a difference. I thought they know. were stuffed. So um, that makes an, out, an absolute difference. Uh, I, I am I am going to throw this in the cannot rate category uh, because we do not know if the, that is an original art piece or if somewhere in uh, Indonesia that is being mass produced. All right, so let's 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 see what else we've got for you here. Go ahead, sell me on this amazing piece of literature. It is the complete, so not the uh, abridged version. Of the book of Black Magic. The New Testament, not the Old Testament. It's the, it's it's the, the complete book of Black Magic and Witchcraft. Um, and uh, when you've got a pentagram on the front, I mean, how can you say no? I think I saw this book once in that movie, Ouija, 
um, from like 1993. Um, ten bucks, ten bucks um, for an incredible piece of literature. I you want to talk about a talking piece? I, I mean, you put that on your I coffee guess, table I, right, there you go. outside of October, and people are gonna okay, they're ooh, gonna ask Margaret, what is this? Uh, yeah, I get, I'm, I'm, that's, you're getting you're getting made for me on this one. I, my my interest is peaked. Right. That's that's all we've got. We're, we're gonna. So that is our first dive into the bargain bin. Uh, all right, so let's let's, uh, let's switch gears again. Let's get back into the sports realm. We're gonna talk a little uh, NFL, a little playoff talk. Uh, let's start off. Let's just talk about last weekend's games, divisional round. Uh, uh, that was some fun football. Oh yeah, to say the least. Um, we can start off that Buffalo Kansas City game. Potentially going down, we saw everyone's heralding as one of the greatest games ever witnessed. Easily one of the most greatest playoff games ever witnessed. Um, I mean, at least in terms of you talk about both sides of the ball, Josh Allen, Pat Mahomes, my God, uh, uh, it was watching that live was was fun to say the least. Watch the replay right now. Um, Fourth quarter, 23-21, Kansas City. A uh, lot of fun here. Um, you know I'm happy with the outcome. I did not want to see Buffalo advance. They very easily could have. Um, you know, for me, this one only cements Mahomes and his legacy, quite honestly. Right. I mean, think about where the Chiefs were back in October versus where they are right now. I mean, they're on the verge of another Super Bowl appearance, and they look like they were just going to nosedive um, into mediocrity uh, back at the, you know, first third turn of the NFL season. So great game, very entertaining. Uh, I don't think you're ever going to see 25 points scored in the last two and a half minutes of a game, uh, whatever it was, something like that. Um, And happy to see Buffalo go down in flames. I could not agree more. I, I was texting a bunch of people at the same time when, during this whole thing, and I was loving every moment of us. Uh, not that I'm a big Chiefs fan, but in that moment, completely good with it. Um, I was good to see Buffalo kind of hit the skids, kind of like the way we were talking about. I did not pull up our, our bracket picks and what have you, but I believe I actually had the Chiefs moving on um, in that game as well. But it was just a fun game to watch, man. Like, that was – that was football at its best in terms of how fun it – just sitting back and having a good time. Uh, it does bring up the overtime rules debate. Um, we can touch on that real quick. I, I There's been plenty of ideas floated out there as far as how do you change this, this, and that. One idea I, I heard that I that resonated with me the most, I think I like the most, and we can argue the, the amount of time. And that, that's, that's debatable. That's fine. But simply going in instead of having a – First score wins, first touchdown wins. So just just play another ten minutes. Like just play another full period, start to finish. So you're not worrying about you're not worrying about a coin flip. You're not worrying about who gets possession first. And they're setting the pace. And they're scoring first and killing. Just you just have another period, maybe maybe get ten minutes or something where you're playing start to finish the entire period regardless. Whoever has the higher score at the end of that period wins. And if you're if you're still tied at that point, then you can work in some new rules or what have you. But not to not to bring up soccer, but it's worked for a long time with soccer in terms of just going and, and deciding big games like that, having an extra full time period, and just playing it out. And I think it makes sense to me, and especially in a playoff setting, that's much regular season. You can leave those rules; I don't care. But in the playoff setting, so much is on the line, especially in this situation like this. I don't see the harm in having the two teams just play it out instead of worrying about circumstantial stuff that might play into why one team got an advantage to start or what have you. But that's my thought. I think I like that idea the most, just having a full period or just an extended period of time and playing to the whistle again and seeing what happens. What do you think? Uh, I hate the current overtime rules, even though, you know, it helped the Patriots, you know, get a, get a Super Bowl title right. just a few years ago um, when, you know, they, they beat Kansas city uh and, and did not give them you know the ball back um i just don't like it uh you know I, i'm with you uh quite honestly i, I know football is a grueling physical tough sport i think it should be a full quarter i'll be honest not 10 minutes i, I think it, I, I, I'm, I'm i fine I, with that too i don't like the gimmicky team. arbitrary let's go with 
10 minutes or the way it's set up right now. Um, if you score a field goal, you have to let them try to score a yeah, field goal. Right. But if you score a touchdown, then the game's like, it's that, just, that, no, it doesn't work for me. It's it quite be normal football. Thank you. A 15 minute normal. I, I'm even, I even hate the ties in the regular season, but I get why they're in place. Agree. And in the playoffs, it should just be there's no ties in the playoff. You're going to play until someone dies. Like, like I'm exaggerating, but you're going to play until one of you loses. I I mean, it just is what it is. But the current, I I hate the current setup. I don't feel bad for Buffalo. Glad Buffalo lost. Um, But uh, yeah, no, it's not a good setup, and it shouldn't be uh, the way it is. All right, so a couple notes here. We'll we'll get to a preview, but uh, found it. I don't know if you saw. I found it kind of funny that. um, Julian Edelman had actually bet a hundred thousand dollars on a Patriots Tampa uh, Super Bowl, and I'm, I'm sorry, he put a hundred thousand dollars. Yeah, I, I know it was on Tampa getting in, and he essentially lost that bet um, gruelingly uh, with the Rams last week. Uh, other question, real quick too, is with uh, Brady and Rogers both out of the playoffs. A lot of talk with both of them right now. What do you think? Are they both is Brady retiring or sticking around for another year? I think he comes back one more season, despite all this weird talk right now. I think he's going to think it through. I think he comes back one more year, and next year's it. He is going to come back one more year. Um, He should hang it up. Uh, Not because he can't win anymore. He is still a top-five quarterback, Um, and and easily a top-five quarterback. Uh, Some would argue he's top three um, in the league right now. Here's the thing. He's always been just kind of stupid. He's always just kind of done things at times in his career that make you scratch your head like, why'd you do that? Why'd you say that? Why did you go that way? And yeah. this is one of those things. He, he's, made, he's got more money than God. He is the greatest quarterback of all time. He has more Super Bowl rings than anyone else ever. He's played at the oldest age at the highest level. Bonafide Hall of Famer. Before he's even put on the ballot, the guy's in the Hall of Fame. And you have all this crap on the side that you want to promote, TV 12, your your documentaries, your this and that. And, oh, by the way, he kind of talks a lot about missing his kids growing up. Right. You're making a very conscious decision to say, you know, I'd kind of like to win one more title. It's going to be really cool for people to talk about me this way. Well, then you're going to miss another year of your kids' lives. I I mean, and listen, for working stiffs like you and me, we juggle the heck out of our day jobs to try to fit in our our kids and and get what we can. This guy could walk away today and taxi each of his kids to every single practice game, what have you. So um, won't be surprised if he he hangs it up. And it would be for that reason alone. I don't think it's going to happen. It seems like he's He's, talking that way too, where that's a, that's, that's a big consideration for him. You know, Um, and then he just gets stupid and makes a a decision. Like I'm going to keep playing. Um, I'll give him one more shot. Right. Uh, As far as Aaron Rodgers, I think at this point, I I don't think, I don't think there's any chance he hangs it up. I do think now that as of today, Broncos hired uh, the Packers offensive coordinator, Nathaniel Hackett as their head coach. And one's talking precursor, potentially uh, both Rodgers and maybe even Devontae Adams heading to Denver. Devontae Adams basically wants to be paid the highest paid receiver in the league at thirty million a year. Uh, the Packers can't pay him that, so they they're they're basically have some major cap issues. They're not going to be able to do that. So, you know, uh, it's 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 a, you know, right now it's a story in the media who could just be a bunch of talk, but it's something to pay attention to. I don't think. I don't think Rodgers hangs it up, but I do think he's out of Greenback. Let me um, ask you that uh, really quickly. Yeah. Top three landing spots for Aaron Rodgers, and it's got to be by trade. Remember, this is a trade for Aaron Rodgers. He's getting traded. He's not a free agent. It's a trade. He's right. still under contract. So right. Through next year, right. Yep. So top three landing spots, go. In no particular order. Sure. Or okay. So I think Denver. I think Denver had was one all along. Absolutely. Uh, I, I think Vegas potentially. Vegas. Um, I think I think Vegas is. I won't say soured on color, but I think that would that would depend depending on what happens with the head coach hire and stuff there. Yeah. Uh, the yeah. third one. Third one. That's a tough one. Tennessee. Um, Not a lot of cachet with Tennessee. Um, 
it makes sense it makes for sense them. on fo- I don't think reasons. he would do it. Um, I agreed, right? He's got that diva yeah. aspect to him that I think would be like, uh, well, you know, how I'm how sure. often am I going to be on TV in, in Tennessee? It, it, right? You know, not that Green right. Bay is this huge media market, but the Packers are the most storied NFL franchise. Right. They still draw a television rating across the country more than Tennessee does. Um, Let me throw this one out at you. The Giants. What about the Giants? What if Sean Payton finagles his way to New York, which would have to be a trade as well because he's retired. Uh, And what about Aaron Rodgers getting traded to the Giants as well? Um, It's creative. I I think it would take even more than that to get him to want to go there. See all the all the San Francisco, uh, all of the um, sorry, all, all of the California teams are are they're already taken. I, I yeah, mean, no, 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 ordinarily I'd want to say he'd want to go and go to San Francisco, but they've already got Trey Lance waiting, so it's there'd be no reason to do that. They yeah. would completely, you know, redirect their ship if they did that. So, right. very interesting. All right, very interesting. Yeah. All right, so let's uh, we're running along here. So we'll, we'll do a quick we'll do a quick preview of the games coming up this weekend. We got AFC Championship game. We have got uh, Cincinnati going to Kansas City as we just alluded to. Kansas City right now is uh, at least as of yesterday when I pulled these lines, giving seven at home. Uh, interesting game. Cincinnati just beat Kansas City uh, at home, mind you, a couple a few weeks ago, week seventeen. There was a thirty four thirty one shootout at home. <laughs> Jamar Chase had eleven catches. 266 yards receiving and three touchdowns in that game. Burrow went ballistic. Um, for yeah. me, this game has shootout potential, obviously written on it, even though it's in Arrowhead this time. It comes down to what we've seen for the last couple of weeks. Can that offensive line even protect Burrow to give him a chance? He got through that against Tennessee because it was Tennessee. I don't know that that line's got to be a hell of a lot better to give him a chance in Kansas City. Um, and then Kansas City's defense, like they melted down pretty bad against Buffalo in that, in that game, um, you know, and then how do they choose what receiver to focus on chase or Higgins, whatever. But um, I don't know. What do you think? I think KC takes this one. I think it'd be, a, I think it's going to be a great game. I, I don't see, you know, the inexperience of, of Cincinnati being too much of a factor here. Um, I just think Mahomes and, and, and that Kansas city offense is unbeatable. I, I see the Chiefs coming out victorious for sure. First, sure. I know it's a, I know it's I know it's a, a, a common popular pick, but it's the way I see it. Well, I mean it's, they're a good team. I mean it's, it make, it makes sense. I mean I think ultimately I'm rooting for Cincinnati. I think they can cover, but sure. I do ultimately I, I have Kansas City moving on in my my little bracket, and I, well, I'm not going to deviate. I, I just think at home that that might end up being too much. Cincinnati's done a hell of a job. Um, Zach Taylor's done a hell of a job, like proving themselves with that team. They they. They've clearly finally turned things around. Burrow is an absolute stud. Um, if they were to lose this game, nothing to hang their heads about. But I think Kansas State takes this one and moves on to the Super Bowl. Uh, next other game, NFC Championship. San Francisco has uh, moving on again, going on to take the Ram, take on the Rams in LA. Right now, the Rams are, are giving three and a half. Uh, funny thing about this game is that even though the Rams are favored, granted they're at home, so it makes mm-hmm. sense. Mm-hmm. They've lost like six in a row. I think it is to the Niners, including both games this year. They lost 31 10 to the Niners in week 11. They lost 27 24 week 18 to the Niners last regular season game, in which the Rams actually had a 17 to nothing lead and, and let the Niners come back and end up tying that game and winning it late. Um, so I don't know if that's in their head. How, you know, sure, you never think anything like that's going to be in a guy's head. So every game is different, et cetera. But these, yeah. these guys are division rivals. They see each other twice a year, every year. When you are lost that many games in a row to a division rival, you can't have, help but have that in the back of your head a little bit, even if you're a player or what have you. Um, or it could just be moment or um, incentive motivation to go out and, and kick their asses this game finally, you know. Um but San Francisco's got momentum, obviously, uh, coming off these last couple of games. They're almost playing with house money. Can their defense contain Stafford and the receivers? Can Garoppolo avoid turnovers? They keep getting the ball to, to Kittle and, you know, all-world Debo Samuel, who's everything for that offense right now. Um, can the Rams pass rush get to Jimmy? 
you know, you've got Cam Akers for the Rams who uh, has come back off of his injury. The Achilles has been playing amazingly the last couple of weeks. Had a couple of costly fumbles last week against Tampa and let help let Tampa get back in the game. So his old friend Sonny Michelle going to get more involved. Um, ultimately, I think I see. I, I still got to take the Rams. I, I, I there's a team that I've been backing for a while. I really want to see them get there. I love Matt Stafford, but San Francisco is not giving. Like they're a good team. I think they're better than what they showed as far as regular, during the regular season overall, as far as the record, and they're proving it now. So, who knows? They could. They could. Make it like eight thousand in a row over the Rams. Yeah, sure. Um, I I love the fact that San Francisco's got that in their back pocket. I'm not certain that it makes a difference, um, but but I love right. it be, because I, because the Rams are favored, right? Um, I wish this game was being played in San Francisco. It's not. It, it's right. it's in LA. I, I I I just cherish outdoor playoff football more so than the indoor. I always think that that takes away a little bit from the Super Bowl, to be really honest with you. Um, I got to be honest. Uh, again, geez, Jimmy Garoppolo makes some really bad passes I, at times. I, I yeah. The Patriots are fortunate that they don't have Garoppolo any longer. He would not last here. He would get pilloried. Um, There's if, a lot of irony there. How you know, as far as Bill, how wow. they wanted to keep him and all this, that's all that Ooh. stuff. And looking at it now, it's like, all right, you know, you'd, you know, maybe it would have been a different story playing in the Patriot system, I guess. Right. But that doesn't change your decision making in the moment, regardless oh, of the system. Yeah. I mean, I, yeah, this speaks to Kyle Shanahan as an NFL head coach. He's really good. Kyle Shanahan is a really is good NFL awesome. head coach. Yep. Um, who I hope it, you know gets uh, the credit that he deserves. This is going to be the Rams. I agree with you. I see the Rams coming out. They you, you, they're not. They don't have San San Francisco. Just does not have a complete enough team to overcome Garoppolo's shortcomings. Right. And I think the Rams are just getting. I think the Rams right now are getting hot and sh- putting it together the way everyone kind of expected them to earlier in the season. And they're going on that late season run. So yep. we'll check back in next week and see uh, what the Super Bowl matchup looks like coming off of these. But, all right, we're going to go ahead and start to, to close it out with another three and out. Um, we've been doing these off and on the last few weeks. Just coming with some some quick hitters, some points we want to close out with. Uh, first down, I'm going to take it here. I'm going to stay with the NFL. I'm not breaking any news. I'm not coming with anything really novel here. But I'm just going to say it. He's, his name has been in the news again this week. Uh, Antonio Brown and his lawyer, his attorney, are talking about going and going after the uh, the Bucks for payments and and paying you know for pit back pay and for the surgery on his ankle, etc. I, I I'm so over Antonio Brown. It's kind of funny. I'm done with it. Um, my my take on this is I'm just saying right now he's he's done in the NFL. He's not going to play another down in the NFL. Uh, I think we might see him play again. Somewhere else, you got the USFL opening up in the spring, um, which has not got a lot of media coverage, I feel like, lately. But USFL finally getting off the ground, and uh, it's starting in April. You got the XFL starting in another year. Uh, the Rock and his media company own that. Um, I can see Antonio playing and must seeing him play somewhere. I don't think it's the NFL. I think especially now with what he's pulling as far as going after the team legally, no team's going to want to touch that again at this point. Like, forget the incident in the Meadowlands. When you go and do this, no team wants to, wants to touch a piece of that after you start going after teams legally like that. Um, so that's not really a hot take, but it's just it's, it's a hot topic this week. So I got to say, I think Antonio Brown is done in the NFL. He's played his last down here. Wow, really interesting. Uh, I love your I love your first down. Um, it isn't it really interesting, ironic even that I think if Antonio Brown had played up the mental health angle. Instead of really Instead of, poo-pooing right. it and saying nothing wrong with my mental health, fine. I, 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 you know, like I, I who's Vontez think, perfect? I, the whole time it seemed like two Vontez Whoa. perfect, and yes. Oh my goodness! <laughs> I think he'd have a better shot at some yeah. redemption potentially, Especially given how. On you know uh, you know oh. in the, you know on everyone's forefront as far as. um Mental health, these wow. days, you think. A, yeah, a real but again, that just speaks, that just speaks to the guy he is. Like, he's just, he's a clown. So, whatever. Uh, all right, second down. What do you got? Second down. Um, 
I, not really sure. I, I would have found myself saying this in the last 12 months, but I, I don't know if you saw the little snippet that uh, Daniel Tice is, is in rumors to maybe come back to the Celtics in a trade. Um, and I never thought I would say, bring back Daniel Tice. Um, I have to be honest with you. He could be a nice Piece I, I liked him. To, like he got he got better and better. I thought as far as working in that rotation, and he found himself over really, the last year or two. Uh, yeah, right. Is wasn't he? Isn't he one of those guys that worked his way up to a certain level, and then right when he maybe could could really crash through and 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 bring out all that potential, the team sells high on him. The team sells <laughs> yeah. high on him. Yeah, um, and, and it is one of those things where you're just like, why? As a as a fan. He was he was a little bit of a fan favorite. Um, I'll Absolutely. tell you what his work ethic, like the I guy grind, for an undersized big man, he had he had a lot of he didn't he didn't excel in any one area, but he was really good in a number of areas. A very toolsy guy that you could count on to play hard and get things done. Yep, I'd love to see him come back. Bring back Daniel Tice. Love it, love it. Absolutely, I'd be curious to see what would be in that trade. <laughs> if you see Marcus Smart go out. Not Marcus right, Smart. Take, not, right, right. You don't hold it for take that back. bad. I don't yeah, want him that yeah, bad. Exactly. All right, third down. Um, this one I am going to just bring in a quick YouTube clip and then you'll understand. Um, it's 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 so it's it's surrounding or it's regarding uh, I don't know if you've watched it. NFL Network has a morning program called Good Morning Football. And generally love the show. I watch it every morning. I keep it on in the background as I'm working. Um, I like everyone on it. Unfortunately, there's one segment that at this point I am I, I months ago I was done with, and it just still just just scratches and claws at my brain, and I can't stand it. And I, I have to just put it out there because I can't do it anymore. Uh, it's starring Kyle, one of his co-hosts, uh, Kyle Brandt, who normally I really like. He's he's yeah. he's got some intelligent takes. He's got a podcast, etc. Um, but he does this segment called Angry Runs. And it is the most insufferable thing I hear on a daily basis. I'm going to play you a clip so you can understand how ridiculous this actually is. Here we go. Damien, let's do it. One, two, three, four, what? five, six, seven. Damien, you maniac. Look at Mac Jones pushing him in. Oh, this is why we get up in the morning. This is why we do the angry runs, guys. This is us, Damien, and Lucifer, and Bill's the Bob, and the Prince of for six, six, six. That's my kind of guy in this segment. All right, so that's uh, – I could go on and on. That thing went on for – that's a six-minute clip. Um, you heard it all oh. right there. When you listen to that for oh. four, five minutes nonstop, I have to change a channel. Like at some yeah. point – Get off the air. I can't take it anymore. Insufferable Kyle Brandt. Get get over yourself. Cause that just seems like I'm so high on myself with the scepter. And we get it. You're you're a big name. Take it down a notch. Take a breath. Don't have a coronary on live television. Enough. That's my third down. Get the angry runs off the air. Love it. Right. Agreed. All right, so before we uh, we get out of here, um, again, a reminder, if you're watching us on YouTube, just to like, subscribe, turn notifications on. Uh, if you're listening on audio, uh, we're available, again, we're available on most main podcast providers. But if you're listening there, please rate and review. Uh, make sure you're following us on social. We are on social. Uh, the number two, two, Padres Pod uh, on Instagram, Twitter, TikTok, Dos Padres Podcast on Facebook. Uh, you can find us anywhere there. Hit us up. Um we're always open for, for comments, suggestions, etc. So again, part of the role takeover. We want everyone along for the ride. We'll be back next week, Sundance. Everyone can look forward to us coming back. We'll be back checking in the Celtics and Bruins, potentially. We're going to talk about these championship championship games we just talked about um, and have a first look at the Super Bowl matchup in a couple weeks. Um, potentially maybe have some lockout. MLB lockout progress to talk about. Be nice. Maybe we can make some headway there. Maybe some Red Sox rumors. Who knows? Also, this is a big one for you. This is going out to you directly. Uh, this Saturday is actually the Royal Rumble, one of the biggest wrestling events of the year. So that's going to be available. If you have Peacock, make sure you're checking that out. We might be talking about that next week. Who knows? British Sundance. Bulldog Davy Boy Smith going to be partaking? 
Well, it's tough when you're dead, but uh, <laughs> the ghost of, possibly. Uh, but anyway, uh, <laughs> we're going to be talking They're about that. Not Davy oh. Boy, but 30 other men or women, possibly. Oh. Uh, so make sure you're checking that out. Come back to check that out next week. Um, you can also check our boys at the Run In Podcast, the Run In Podcast, who will also be covering the Royal Rumble uh, ad nauseum over the next couple of weeks as well. So go check those guys out. Um, yeah, that's that's about it for tonight. <laughs> I'm Major J. That's Sundance Kid. Somewhere around here is the ghost of Davy Boy Smith. <laughs> we collectively are the Dos Padres. Asta to Sueños. What do you think? Are we out? We're out. We are are out. We are out. See you next week. Once again, let's get out.